Hello and welcome back. This is Arise Works and this is episode 4 of getting started with Houdini Workshop. So this video will be about modeling operations, you know, working with extrusions, polybevel, um, wire, polywire and other things that will be useful for creating geometry. So let's see what we can do. Uh, first of all, as per usual, we start with geometry. Uh, dive inside and uh, first things first, I will just show you after creating a box, uh, how well polybevel actually works. So I drop a polybevel, shift enter. And if I start now modifying the polybevel, as you can see, something is definitely happening. So we are uh, filleting our geometry using the polybevel. And of course, uh, we can control the profile now in Houdini 18 going further. We can uh, control the profile and make it more concave, convex, uh, inverted and what have you. So basically, uh, you can also control the profile ramp. So just, just using one bevel, you can do well, a lot of interesting operations on the geometry. Uh, this can be useful for uh, creating the moldings for windows and things like that. Of course, everything stays procedural. If you increase the amount of uh, divisions, it will adjust accordingly. If you increase the distance, it will adjust accordingly as well. So nothing like uh, super hard here. If we, let's say, have the sphere and make it a polygon and connect it to the polybevel, as you can see, we have some sort of sort of interesting-ish looking geometry, almost like um, getting ready for some motion graphic -y stuff. It will just tweak the distance. As you can see, it goes like this and uh, starts to destroy itself. It's kind of interesting. I mean, it's not always you need to destroy your geometry, but what if you need for the sake of your let's say, short video, just to have some sort of effect like that. Okay, now I will drop a grid and we will talk about uh, extrusions for a second. Now, extrusion creates new geometry. Uh, it says PEXT, poly extrude. Uh, creates new geometry by pushing geometry on the normals of the faces. And by the way, it works on the faces. It will be important possibly sometime later when we will talk about uh, attributes in another session. But for now, uh, let's just see what it does. So if we extrude the thing, as you can see, it moves up and down. You can uh, also do it in the viewport. Nothing super interesting here. Uh, if you move your uh, mouse button, um, mouse wheel, I'm sorry, it moves as well the inset. Now this is not particularly intriguing in our case uh, because I wanted to show you how to do uh, not just the connected but individual elements as well. So as you can see, uh, if I just uh, disable the viewing, uh, we now have everything extruded on its own. Now where it gets sort of interesting is that uh, we can actually polybevel not just faces like on a sphere, right? or on a box in our case, not just uh, the edges of the faces, but we can actually also uh, bevel points. So this is exactly what we can do. I drop the poly bevel after the grid and nothing yet happening. But if I increase the distance, as you can see, something definitely starts to happen, right? Um, so we can do this solid, we can do the crease, chamfer, uh, those are a bit different for different scenarios, like for a sub Um In our case, uh, let's say we want the distance like that and um, divisions like that. And if we now pull extrude it, as you can see, we have I wouldn't exactly call it like sci-fi floor or anything, but almost. If we drop a normal just uh, to 
we fix the normals, uh, the cusp angle a bit low, so now it looks kind of correct. And yep, as you can see, we have some sort of um, pattern on our floor. And of course, if we decrease the amount of rows, as you can see, this kind of looks like kind of looks like sci-fi floor. Okay, just let's pretend. <laughs> okay, uh, next up. Um, I'm going to show you working with curves. I'll create a curve. By the way, um, I think I forgot to tell you that to go to the top view, uh, you can hover over your viewport and hold down space and press 2. Um, space bar 2 will go to the top. Space bar 3 will go to the front. Space bar 4, uh, space bar 4 will go to the right. And space bar 5 will open up the UV. So space bar, uh, space bar one uh, goes back to the traditional perspective camera or orthographic if you enable that. Okay, so we go to the our right view. I'll enable our curve that I just created. Press enter and I will start. Whoops, drawing. If it doesn't start drawing, hold down shift and double click. Uh, sometimes it helps. If, it, if nothing helps, just delete the curve and create a new curve. That should help. Uh, anyway, so we have the curve, right? And you're looking at this and thinking, yeah, all right, curve. This is very exciting, right? Uh, what we can do is polywire the curve. So it immediately, whoops, immediately becomes geometry. So if I increase the uh, decrease the Y radius a bit and increase the divisions. As you can see, we immediately have a tube. Mm, not a tube, a pipe. So this looks kind of a bit mm, janky. So apparently we have to make it look better. And we can. Uh, basically another polybevel. I hit the tab, start typing polybevel. Uh, I inserted before the polywire. And as we learned previously, we can bevel the points. And if we make it round, you will see that our curve looks much more uh, soft and uh, well beveled. And our resulting pipe looks pretty good as well. So there you go. Um, the beauty of this solution is that if we select a curve, press and whoops. Uh, select the curve, press enter, and now if we move around our points, they will retain the bevels and the geometry will be automatically rebuilt for us. This is really useful, um, very useful for procedural modeling, obviously, and any other modeling operations of your choice. Okay, next up, what I want to show you is let's actually again drop another sphere and make it polygon because I like polygonal spheres for no reason. They're just kind of cool. But what is even more cool is that they are great for this effect. Uh, we can drop polywire on our geometry. And as you can see, we have some sort of... Actually, I'm not sure what we have, but we have ge geometry, all right? And uh, if you are, maybe, maybe uh, you are coming from, let's say, uh, Cinema 4D, and you're thinking, um, I'm not sure, I, I think the, oops, um, I will just drop another sphere. I think uh, the modifier is called uh, something polygon or atom, I don't remember. So basically what it does, it creates some sort of uh, spheres on the points, and it converts edges into wires. So this is exactly what we're going to do. So again, uh, we have our sphere and the sphere obviously comes with the points that are highlighted by the blue after I click this button. Now what we're going to do, as we learned in the previous section, we can copy two points. I start C, T, P, enter. And if we geometry this sphere and uh, the target points that we already have here, and of course, uh, we make our spheres polygonal and super sm super small. Something like this. I will disable this. 
and when we merge the result with our initial sphere, what we will have is this. Now, actually, my bad. I didn't want it to merge with uh, our sphere. I was holding down Y, uh, which creates scissors, and I want to merge it with the polywire. And now we have the effect just like we would have in Cinema 4D, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm pretty sure there is a thing that does just well this effect. So uh, you probably are maybe have heard somewhere or have seen this effect where you can sort of create a blend using the conversion to volumetric data. <clears throat> This is what we're gonna do. We can convert our polygons into VDB um, for volumetric data and operate it as if it were volumes. Now, you don't need to be hung up on the terminology. Um, it's not important at this rate, just know that we will create the polygonal representation into voxelized representation, which is like uh, pixels in 3D, okay? Um, so it's called VDB from polygons. I start typing VDB FP, and as you can see, VDB from polygons, here we go. Uh, it looks horrible. This is because the voxel size is too big. Now, if we make it 0 0.05, still not enough. 0 0.02, still not enough. 0 0.1, eh, kind of better. Now, the result is that, as you can see, it became, um, it sort of became one geometry that kind of intersects with each other in a, in a very organic way, so to speak. Now what I'm going to do is uh, smoothen the result, VDB S for VDB smooth, shift enter. Um, again, what I want to do is reduce the voxel size even smaller. Now be careful. It takes a lot of computational and um, resources, and it takes a lot of RAM to do this. So if you're not exactly having a supercomputer there, it doesn't take a supercomputer, but if you are uh, making this number smaller and smaller, it might hang your computer. So be careful with this, because right now, as you can see, we have how many? 2.155 million voxels that's a lot of voxels so each time you decrease this number it means there is uh, the number of voxels will increase dramatically all right so finally we have this vdb smooth iterations um, let's increase the radius let's increase the iterations to mm, something like this and now we can convert it back to polygons it's called uh, VDB convert. Shift enter, convert to polygons. And as you can see, we have this kind of effect uh, that the, our spheres got melded with our wires and they look like, um, I don't know, like atom, more or less something organic. And of course, if you increase the, where is it? If you increase the sphere, it will automatically propagate and it will recompute everything. So you will have a good result after all. Okay, next up, another extrusion. Now we'll start with another grid and I'll make it a rows two by two, size one by one, because I think it will be enough. So um, what we'll now, uh, what we will have now is another uh, curve. I'll drop a curve. I'll go uh, spacebar three to go to front. This is our grid, and this is going to be our curve. So I start drawing the curve, um, something like something like this. Press enter. Uh, convert it to NURBS. Should be good. Uh, move this point a little bit to the right. Maybe this one to the left, just to illustrate the point a bit better. Now, why am I doing this is I'm going to uh, create another extrusion. Uh, PXT. And uh, this time we will be 
extruding through the curve. So here's how it's going to work. Uh, we increase the divisions, let's say 50 for, for now. Uh, the distance um, should be, uh, let's preview the curve. The distance should be much more sort of like two, seems like an okay. Uh, the spline control, um, let me see. Oh no, my bad. Uh, spline shape is curve from second inputs. And as you can see, yep, it does what it says. We can now control our extrusion by just working the curve, which is super useful again, which is, I, I'm saying it's all the time, but trust me, it's super useful. Okay, um, probably you're a bit like, uh, this is all sort of procedural things. I don't care a lot about procedural things, right? Where is my box modeling? Here it is. <laughs> Drop another box. Um, and let's see, we can go to, um, we can go to shelf tools to model some things. Uh, we can um, go to polygon, but maybe I'll just show you how the pie menus work. So I go to here and I change from main to poly modeling. What it will do is convert my C menu, uh, which is uh, happening when you hover over the viewport and press the C key. As you can see, I now have edge loop, poly bevel, poly extrude, all the good stuff. Okay, let's see how it works. Um, I first select um, S and I select, as you can see, I select uh, just the face. I can pull extrude. If I um, middle mouse, Scroll middle mouse, you can, uh, as you can see what's happening, right? We can, the, we can have the inset. If I drag the middle mouse, as you can see, I can modify where our extrusion goes. Actually, I don't want to modify this extrusion anywhere. Next up, you can press the Q. If we just selected our poly extrude, instead of just uh, saying, uh, clicking C and go to poly extrude, you can press the Q button, which will repeat the previous operation. And as you can see, we now can pull extrude. And there you go. This is your sort of uh, classic poly modeling. Uh, same goes, of course, for edge loop. You can create edge loops. Press enter. Then you press, uh, by the way, when you press Q on the edge loop, it goes into this poly, poly split, sort of like the um, knife because um, it just so happens that um, the operation of edge loops is um, an instance of the poly split tool, right? So if you want to repeat the um, creating additional edge loop, it's better to go press the C, press the poly extrude. Okay, so I can now select, I don't know, let's say this edge and say poly bevel increase the distance as you can see well this is working right uh, all of that is working of course you can go and uh, create uh, convert to subdivision subdivide and it will look horrible because we destroyed our edge loops and houdini crashed beautiful okay um i will start up another houdini Mm, I'm actually thinking, okay, I forgot to tell you about Booleans. I mentioned Booleans previously, <clears throat> but we need to talk about Booleans mm, a bit more, I guess. Let's give a second. Who do you need to restart? All right. So we create another geometry. Uh, we go create another box because boxes are very nice. Um, I select this edge and this edge and I select E and uh, do something like this. Then I select this face and press T and move it downwards. Um, and finally, what I want to do is actually creates a copy of this thing. Uh, and to create a copy, I will just do it by transformation. 
So I'll do the transform. Now we keep this one in mind, but this one, the uniform scale, I will reduce the uniform scale as you can see, but I need to scale it in the, apparently in the y-axis because it's green. Um, I'm not sure, nope. In the z-axis. Nope. <laughs> I'm horrible at this. What is happening? Anyway, um, so you're you're looking at this and thinking, what is happening, right? So what is happening is that if we now Boolean, and Boolean operations, they can unify geometry, they can intersect geometry, or they can cut out one piece of geometry out of another piece of geometry. So here's how it goes. Uh, we take this edited geometry and get it into the geometry A. This one, that is with different proportions, we will get into geometry B. And as you can see, the operation is subtract. And, yep, there is a hole. And obviously, whoops, my bad. Uh, obviously, if we now just move around this one, as you can see, it procedurally and non-destructively just booleans one geometry out of another. So, the interesting part here, if, if we say polybevel first, and we select, uh, I press S3, and, um, whoops, um, actually, press group here, then I start selecting. Rotate a little bit. Then I'll press enter, and now it will know that we want to polybevel just this thing. Shape round is okay, fine by me. And now, if we have this transformation, as you can see, um, it inherited the information from there, and now Boolean actually has the, um, the beveled cutout. So, there you go. Really, really useful. Okay. Um, I'm thinking what could I might have forgotten. Possibly, um, let's see, let's create another curve. Go to right view. I don't want to see this, I want to see our curve. And start... Um, drawing something. In in my case, I had to hold down the shift and double click because for some reason it didn't want to work. Uh, another NURBS, I think. And um, if I'm not mistaken, it's called sweep. Um, some, and we have to have at least greed. Um, I'm usually getting confused uh, which input is which. So... Okay, here we go. Uh, so basically, uh, this is as close to working with CAD data as it goes. Uh, because, uh, you know, honestly, if you want to work with curves, CAD data, like computer-assisted design, um, like in Rhino or in um, Moya 3D or maybe Fusion 360, AutoCAD, something like this, uh, you will be better off working with CAD data there. It still can do the revolves like you would expect and uh, everything like that, but it obviously lacks the precision of CAD. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. Again, if you reverse this, um, you can then convert it to polygonal data because uh, previously it was just... Um, NURBS curves, as you can see, like 20 vertices, 20 points. And when we convert it, it has, well, much more polygons and much more well, data to work with. And you can tweak um, it here. Anyway, so a uh, general rule of thoughts when I am modeling things, I'm looking for a way to speed up uh, my modeling, like, uh, any way I can. Uh, by the way, 
one of the final things I wanted to show you. Whoops, uh, just tube. Let's see what tube. Now, uh, the tube is nothing special. I just wanted to show you how to pull a cap. Now, you can create tube with caps, but if for some reason you end up with geometry with no uh, with no caps and uh, you can obviously say PCAP for poly cap and it will cap it for you. Very useful. Uh, a lot of options here like triangles, triangulated fan, it actually <laughs> deforms the thing so you can insert, go it upwards, outwards, you name it, uh, you, you got it. Now that we are actually talking about this, um, let's talk a little bit about extruding and working with sub-D. Now, if you never have seen sub-D in your life, honestly, the subdivision modeling is modeling through interpolation of the polygonal representation and uh, making it more and more defined with each step. What I'm, what I'm trying to say in a, in a non-ridiculous way, in a human way, is that polygons, um, they are vector representations of geometry. They're not really like real geometry, right? So this is what subdivision um, takes into account when it tries to represent geometry. So, okay, this is not helping at all. Um, I will select uh, this face and uh, I'll go to poly modeling here. Press C, pull extrude, do it like this. Then I press Q, do it like this. When I press Q again, middle mouse drag, uh, middle mouse, I'm oh, sorry. Um, again, Q, okay. This looks sort of almost, almost fine. Uh, maybe as a final thing, I wanted to do it like this, press uh, E, Oops, I press E and do it like this. Okay, almost kind of like a rocket, right? So if I now create it and make it subdivision by sub D, subdivide. Um, okay, apparently I had some sort of selection and I delete the selection, I press and enter. Um, now I subdivide, as you can see, it becomes kind of smooth, obviously. Right, it becomes uh, actually looking like a bullet, but it comes with a little bit of a problem. So this is where the previously mentioned poly bevel comes into play. I press the tab, I press P B E V for poly bevel, insert it here, um, and uh, I will poly bevel just these edges, the edges that need more definition. So what we're going to do is make it um, increase chamfer. I think chamfer. Increase a little bit of distance. But here's the problem. Uh, the problem is that it starts chamfering every single edge. If I now subdivide this geometry, as you can see, um, it not get smooth around the diameter, around the circular part of it. So what we're going to do is we will restrict the poly bevel just to the angles that are ha um, harsher than the angles of the tube. Okay, so uh, we will do it by enabling the exclusions, ignore flat edges. And as you can see, it stopped evaluating these edges. And now, it will look just right. There you go. It looks uh, crisp and sharp here. And by the way, you can increase the sharpness by uh, making the distance smaller or making the divisions more divisions. I think uh, divisions of three is okay and the distance could be smaller. And now it looks pretty much perfect. It actually looks like a bullet now even more. Not sure why I mentioned rocket, but anyway, you get the point. Okay, final thing. Um, as I previously mentioned, I usually 
go about modeling things uh, the easiest way possible, right? Because Houdini has so many things to model everything. And by the way, this is just an introductory, um, introductory video to modeling to Houdini. I obviously did not cover everything I could, but more or less, uh, you get the point. So what I'm trying to say is uh, where, when we will be doing our final project, every single thing that I am showing you in this video, it will come into play with a 99% of 99% chance that we will use everything that I have um, mentioned here. So this is uh, useful or any other project in your mind, of course, because um, I suppose I covered more or less uh, important things about modeling in Houdini. Okay, uh, what I'm trying to do now is let's do the curve. Trying to kind of showcase you the way I'm going about things. Um, space bar four to go into right. And um, if you hold down control, by the way, and start drawing your curve, it will be uh, getting uh, right angles of 45 degrees and snap into position but i don't want that i want something like this and this okay uh, i will convert it to nerves i think go to spacebar one to look it from the side now i will pull extrude it And it will cause a bit of a problem, and I will show you how to combat the problem later on when we will run into the problem. Now, I will transform extruded front, okay? And if I move, okay, not in the X, all right, it was the Y axis. Now, as you can see, we have this kind of um, angled plane sort of thing, and I will extrude again. Again, pull extrude. But now I will extrude it, let's say, upwards. Sounds about right. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, we want to output back. Otherwise, if we don't output back, it will not have all the geometry that we need to work with it. Now, next part, I want to polybevel. And you already can see that poly beveling will be a bit problematic because uh, these loops are a bit um, they're a bit too close to each other and i'm doing this because we will subdivide it oops subdivide it um at the last part of this exercise so if you remember uh, from previous section we resampled our curve as we saw fit whoops uh oh resample drop it here and uh, if i enable the points now as you can see that that's a lot of points i want to do it by maximum segments and uh, for sub d the less is better so i would say five segments is okay and interestingly enough it continues to work pretty well. As a final thing, uh, when we go back to our poly extrude, I drop the poly bevel to give it a bit more definition. And now I will, no, actually round will be doing just fine. Actually, uh, when you have the divisions of one, it doesn't really matter which one you use, solid, crease, or round, because they all, all look kind of the same. Uh, it's when you increase the divisions, they start looking differently, as you can see in a second. Chamfer looks like this, round looks like this. So in our case, uh, round will be good. Divisions of one, again, will be good. So why I'm doing this is I'm gonna have you some sort of a plank. Now, if I subdivide this, um, as previously mentioned, we will run into a problem that this becomes a little bit too defined. As you can see, here, this angle is a bit too defined. It's looks, uh, it doesn't look smooth like we want. 
So again, we go to our poly bevel. Um, now I will not disable the view of subdivide. I will just go to uh, poly bevel, exclude only angles that we don't need, which are this one, two, three, four. Ignore flat edges. And uh, voila, the poly bevel. Ignore the edges that we did not need and bevel just the edges that we did need. And now it looks perfectly smooth because subdivision. Um, if you want to know how to model with subdivision, um, there are a lot of other tutorials on YouTube that probably will do justice to this technique because I'm not the greatest subdivision modeler in the world. Sometimes I use it, but usually I don't because <laughs> I use a CAD for modeling, things like that. Anyway, uh, where is it? Uh, if we kind of tweak this poly extrusion a bit more, increase the divisions here, so it kind of becomes more defined. As you can see, we already have some sort of a plank going on. And by the way, uh, since we are uh, in Houdini and we do everything procedurally, we can go to transform, drop transform right after we created the curve, uh, we can scale it, uh, we can scale it just, oops, uh, just in one axis, make it kind of wider and whatnot. So now if we create a tube, that will, where is it, with less radius and more height, something like this. Uh, make it a polygon with caps, move it around. Okay, move it around. Sounds like something like this. Okay. Uh, then I would say we can mirror it. All right, this mirror is not great, and it actually is not great at explaining what is happening, but obviously you can change the direction again. If you hold down control, uh, it will do the right angles of 45. Now, as a final thing, uh, if you merge this into one, as you can see, this is kind of like the start of the Tori gate that you can create. And, um, uh, if you just create another box, let's say here, and make it look sort of like this. Hopefully I will not get a lot of heat for <laughs> making it so um, irresponsibly. Because um, this is not exactly from profane to enlightened on my um, on my side right here. But anyway, you get the point, right? Uh, this was created by tubes. This was just a box. Uh, this was extrusion of the curve. I really love using uh, really love using curves because curves are very, very um, useful and they can, you know, allow you a lot of flexibility and tweakability. So um, there is, whoops, there is another project with a finished, more or less okay looking uh, Tori gate. As you can see, it looks much better than the, what we previously had. Uh, this is what happens when you spend more than two minutes on, on your model. And uh, as you can see, I actually applied some materials that did some procedural UVs and exported that into Substance Painter. And uh, the final, whoops, uh, the final result, hopefully my computer will not crash this time again. The final result looks more or less like this. So that's pretty cool. And obviously you can then use it in your uh, short movies or in the game or what have you. So yeah, there you go. Uh, it looks kind of scary, right? But honestly, nothing, nothing new. Uh, this is exactly what we were using before. 
like mirror things, apply material, then we merge everything together. And uh, this divide is just to make it triangular for game engines and things like that. So obviously, things come from boxes, columns for, come from columns. It's not hard, right? It, it looks like a, I don't know, tarantula, right? But actually, it's basically super easy to do. And um, this is just more of this that we already have done. So don't be afraid to model in Houdini. It totally works. Polygons are just polygons. Um, as a final thing, obviously, you can drop a mountain because who doesn't like a mountain? I mean, <laughs> I have been talking about mountain so much that uh, I feel like we just should do it for a bit of irregularity, right? Okay. Anyway, there you go. Um, a lot of information, a lot of things for you to try out to learn. Um, if you want to push it a bit harder, don't be afraid to go into the modeling. Try to revolve. Revolve usually works with just flat planes or curves. It will create... Um, if you are revolving curves, it will create a curve geometry that you will have to convert with a convert node, like we previously discussed, this one. So, um, yeah, uh, go to Polygon, uh, Clip um, is something that you would use if you want to destroy half of your geometry, then to make a mirror of it. Oops. Okay. Uh, clip, as you can see right now, uh, clipping clip is clipping uh, everything that is above but the direction should be actually where should it be in the z-axis I guess yep here we go uh, and if you mirror that um, you would have a perfectly mirrored geometry even if you uv it as well, the UVs will copy as well. So that's the thing. Uh, clip and mirror, really useful for anything that has any sort of um, thing that can be mirrored from left to right, top to bottom, you name it. Yeah, um, play with this. It's a lot of information, but it's a lot of fun to... Don't be afraid to make mistakes, right? You can always go back and fix it because we are in Houdini. It's not like you're doing things and like, oh my God, there is no way I'm fixing this, right? Because you can always go back and fix it. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if it feels intimidating, don't feel the pressure to learn everything in, how much is that, in a one hour, two hours. It's not working like that. You will not even remember every single note in one hour. So. Don't pressure yourself or overestimate your abilities to remember everything. It's okay to fail here and there. No one will judge. Um, it's fine. So yeah, you have a nice day. If you like what you see, press the like button. Uh, if you want to see more and get to that uh, final project that I keep mentioning, but uh, we are getting there, okay? I think we are almost there. So there you go. Subdivision, pulley bevel extruding, curves, uh, booleans, crashing Houdini, we did it all. So have fun, uh, see you later and goodbye.